welcome back to another episode of Mr. Mixer. Today we're going to be taking a look at these springs right here. So yeah, believe it or not, in about 2016, KitchenAid actually took these springs off of the machines. They no longer come with it. Now, the hilarious thing is, when you call them, they get so many calls from people saying, yeah, my machine doesn't have a spring on it. And they don't realize, like the people who work the uh, customer service don't realize that the machines don't even come with a spring anymore. So they send you a new machine, and that one also doesn't have a spring. So, in order to fix that, help them, help you, help me, we're going to show you how to add one to your machine. Okay, so the reason that you want a spring and washer installed on your machine, it just really helps protect it a little bit, right? So, they took these off because they say, oh, it provided no real function, but they're wrong. Basically, this paddle right here is made out of burnished aluminum, right? You can see down there that is, in fact, aluminum. Well, this shaft here is actually made out of steel, and it's a lot harder. So, when you have the spring and you slide it up into place, you see it really doesn't allow for a whole lot of play. helps hold it steady. But if you have it in a spot that you know doesn't have a spring, look at how much extra play is on that, right? So, what that does is it allows this steel to waller this aluminum out because it's harder. And then you'll have a lot more side-to-side -side movement while you're mixing. They actually start clanging the side of the bowl. And then, you know, it really just leaves your machine susceptible to damage. You know, if you're mixing and it's able to slide over this way and you get something hard underneath it, it's going to cause that to want to kick out this way. As So, you know, if it was pressed on there firm, it would either just crush whatever's going through um, or just wouldn't allow any awkward pressure on the shaft of your machine. So, that's why we want to add these. Check it out here. Look at all of these that we manufactured. We manufactured about 2,000 of them. Now, the reason we had to do this is KitchenAid actually completely, not only did they take them off of their machines, they completely, completely quit manufacturing them. So we had to do it for you. Well, let's show you how to install them real quick. All right, before we get started, I do just want to go over real quick. So this is where the spring goes right here. They used to come on the tilt head machines in the old, you know, K5SS bowl raised style of machines. They've actually never came on the Pro 5 Plus or the Professional 600. But the cool thing is, is that the springs that we've made will work with both the tilt head and the Pro 600 style of machine. So if you'd like to add one to that, we'll also be doing a video how to on how to add one to the Pro 600. That'll be in a different video. All right, let's hop right into it. I wish I had a big enough budget to afford like a kangaroo costume or even an Easter bunny costume, man. That'd be, that'd be so fun. One day, one day I will have the production budget. All right, there are a few things you will need for this job. You will need a pair of snap ring pliers. You will need a 1 8 inch punch. You will need a flathead screwdriver and a rubber mallet. Now, don't worry if you need these tools. We do have them available on our website. They actually even come in a little kit with the spring and washer, so you can just get it all at a singular time. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do here is get our rubber mallet and flathead screwdriver. We've got to remove this drip ring right here. Now, it's it, you just got to be careful. You don't want to damage your paint, but you just got to get the edge of that screwdriver right on the edge of that lip of that ring and just give it a few little taps with your rubber mallet. You'll see it start to come down. Uh, don't knock it all the way off. Just get it off a little bit, and then we can go ahead and remove. This will be an excellent time to clean this. As you can tell, it kind of collects a bunch of gunk and grease. As a matter of fact, let me show you a really nasty one. Let's go right over here. Yeah, I know. Sometimes they get caked. Pun intended. Look at all that. Look at all that baking debris. That's a mixture of oil, baking debris. It kind of looks like a crunched up butterfinger in there. Get your finger off my butterfinger. All right, the next thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and drive this pin out because we do actually have to remove this planetary. That's why we need the 1 8 inch punch. Now, there are actually two different ways to do this, but for the sake of you know, not damaging your machine, not having to buy extra parts and things like that. We are going to do it by removing the planetary. The other way is actually to punch out this pin right here on this uh, planetary shaft. Well, if you punch this out and you end up wallering out that hole at all, this pin is never going to go back in the same way. It's going to cause issues with getting your attachments put onto the machine and things like that. So we are going to do it the right way. But do you know the way? Do you know the way? So what we want to do is go ahead and grab our 1 8 inch punch and a hammer. I forgot to mention that we did need a hammer. We do need a hammer. So what we're going to do is punch this pin out. Now, don't be afraid to hit it. You really, you need to hit it hard. If you're scared that you're going to damage your machine, maybe have someone help you, but uh, you, you need to hit it hard. What we're going to do is we're going to line up our pin just like that. You want to make sure 
that it's right on the pin, not touching the planetary at all, and line it up, and we're just gonna give it a nice solid whack. And you have to hit it several times here. And I can say I've hit it, you know, three or four times. It's moved some. It's going to start coming out now. Now, if you get to the point where you give it a few solid whacks and you don't feel it moving, what you can do is you can just kind of turn your planetary this way and give it a few pops from this side as well. That'll help loosen that pin up. Now, if you just keep banging on the same side over and over again and it's not moving, you will start to damage this pin. It can flatten the head and make it harder to get out. So just be a little bit mindful of what you're doing. Take your time, but... This one's already started moving, so let's go ahead and finish giving it a few taps here. And there she goes. And we're out. Okay, so now that we have that pin out, we can actually just pull down on this planetary here, and it should slide right out. You can see it starting to move there. Now, sometimes these will get pretty gunked up and they can be kind of hard to remove. So what you can do is you can get a couple screwdrivers, just a couple flathead screwdrivers, and if you have to, you can just kind of put them in here, line them up, make sure that your blade is along this screw so you're not bending out this wall here. And uh, yeah, just go ahead and just pry upwards just a little bit, it'll allow it to push out just like that. Now, one thing you may consider is uh, putting a towel or something down here on the base of your machine, because sometimes if they're really tight and you have to pry a little bit, they can come flying off. We don't want you to damage your paint on your machine. So just be mindful of that. But yeah, now we can just go ahead and pull this the rest of the way down here. And it just pops off just like that. Another great opportunity to kind of get this cleaned out as well. And yeah, look at that, it's got some gunky goo goo in there. Was that you? Was that you? Did you lay the chunk? Who laid the chunk, boy? All right, we're gonna go ahead and clean this up real quick just to make our job a little bit cleaner so we're not getting quite as dirty. This isn't a really dirty install, uh, but you know, there is a little bit of grease and oil in there that we wanna go ahead and get cleaned out. Now, personally, if you're installing your spring, I do recommend doing a re-grease at this point. You already have the hardest part of the machine taken apart. There's really only a few more screws that you need to remove. You gotta remove these five screws here these two body screws here, and then there's one on each side in the back here, and then one on its respective side on the other side. And then this top literally just pulls up and off, and you'll know, I mean, if you take your band off, you'll see grease leaking everywhere. If you see oil stains on your machine, it's time to do. You're already halfway there. Uh, it's, we recommend that you do it at this point. Okay, now we are ready for our little handy dandy snap ring pliers here. Now you'll see right here, there is this little snap ring and all you wanna do is get the little prongs, the little nublets of your teeth in there or your tool in there and you'll just spread it out and go ahead and pull it off just like that. Now be careful because sometimes if you aren't careful and you don't have your you know, little nubs all the way through the holes, these things have a tendency to go flying. I mean, they will cross the room into the void gone forever don't worry we can get these for you if you end up losing them reach out to us and, and we'll get one sent out to you all right so now that we have the snap ring pulled out you can just go ahead and set that off to the side this gear right here actually just pops right up now sometimes if yours is really old it could be caked on there pretty hard um, it might not just slide off like that you might again have to pry a little bit with a screwdriver to get it to come up and then there'll be a pin underneath it. Let's go ahead and remove that pin. We'll set that off to the side as well. Let's take a look real quick how that actually works. So that pin goes through and it actually, you know, sits in this little channel here. And that's what, you know, provides uh, the, I guess the torque factor for this gear here. It allows it to spin on that axis. Engineers, we are not. Yes, yes, yes. So now this will actually just slide right on out. It should anyways. There is a washer right here, metal washer. Let's go ahead and set that. That installs underneath that gear. We'll show you when we put it back together. But yeah, this just pops on out just like that, okay? And then there's one more snap ring that we'll have to remove, which is right here. All right, let's go ahead and get this second snap ring off. This is going to be the hardest part of the fix, but it's it just takes a little bit of patience, to be honest. We'll apply some upward pressure from the back while I'm inside of these little nubs here, let's make sure that we get in there. Again, it's gonna take just a, uh, it's gonna take a little bit of fiddling with it, but you know, see we got the back end up, it's out of that groove already. There we go, like that. You can see we're starting to kick out of that groove. So 
And then what we can do is try to come from the bottom here if we can. Let's pull this down and see if we can't knock it up around that edge here. Get the front end up. Come on, baby. Get in your hole. You're too good for your home. Like I said, it does take a little bit of finesse in here. Vanessa Carlton. If I could get this pen out. Honestly, guys, these snap rings are just usually a pain. Yeah, they're a pain. They actually, so they put these on a lot of different things. You'll find these on vehicles. You'll find these on all kinds of consumer appliances and electronics. They're just always a pain. Uh, but it's not undoable. It's just takes a little bit of time and effort there we go come on baby all right there we go you can see we've come from the other side we've got it started moving here let's see if we can get it up out of that channel there i think we're right stinking there come on baby okay so it looks like we're actually up and over on a majority of it if you need to you can come in here with a screwdriver and just give it a little bit of a pry to get it up over that lip and now we are over the lip now at this point you should be able to really just grab it and just kind of pull up on it like this um, if you'd like you can also try and get your snap ring pliers back in there and spread it out to make it a little bit easier as you come up but honestly just doing this should work out for the most part here and once we get it to the top, you're going to have to do it again because, unfortunately, there is this other little snap ring hole there that we pulled the first one from. We might be able to skip over it if we're real crafty about it and get, let's see if we get it nice and close and then take one of these and see if we can pop it up and around. Looks like we're not having any such luck. So we'll just go ahead and push that up just like that. Same process again. We'll go ahead and just pop this over the edge. It'll be a little easier now. You won't have to fight this spring. This one had a spring on it already. So you shouldn't have to fight this spring. I do, unfortunately. And there we go. We see we've got the lip over it. It should just kind of pop up and off now there we go just like that all right now this spring and washer is I, I feel so accomplished right now that was like i said it takes a little bit of patience you're gonna put uh, your put both hands up okay. okay so now this washer here and this spring should just come off you won't have this on there if you're putting this on there obviously so what we're going to go ahead and do, we'll just come over here. You'll be shipped your handy dandy little spring and washer, right? Same thing. We'll just slide that back down into place. Slide it on just like that. Then we'll put our spring on. And now we're ready to do the whole process in reverse, basically. So what we'll do is we will go ahead and get our snap ring and start that process again. All right, make sure that you are putting on the washer first. We want the washer to be resting against this uh, agitator pin here and then we'll go ahead and slide our spring down and then we're going to just uh, go ahead and reinstall our snap rings here now it's going to be the same thing it's a little bit easier to put them on because you just have a little bit better i guess straight shot at it here we'll go ahead and get that over just like that and just keep on sliding her on down. The install is always a heck of a lot easier than the removal. Now you will notice once you get it into that channel again, and make sure that you are in the channel, you'll feel it click into place. These little uh, prongs here will be closer together. If they're still spread out, you'll know that you are not in the hole. So make sure that you are in your little channel. Okay, so now we are actually ready to go ahead and slide the agitator shaft up through the planetary again. So we'll just go ahead and slide that up just like that. Now, remember, we do have a metal washer. We want that metal washer to go right on top like that. Then our pin again, we'll take our pin, slide that through, and then we can sit our gear into place. Now, remember, it does have those little channels on it, so you wanna get that to sit. I mean, obviously, if you're not in the right place, you can see it's not sitting, but then it's sitting just like that. And lastly, we're gonna go ahead and put our second snap ring back into place 
we'll go ahead and get on there like this give it a widen and we're on just like that now you have a spring okay so before we slap this back together there are a couple things that you want to do here now you want to go ahead and take your pin and run it through this shaft here these pin holes here uh you can see you know i got a little bit of metal shavings out of there you see that right there you don't want that getting you know pinched in here when you put that back in all right yeah so you don't want those metal shavings getting pinched in between there because that planetary shaft will come back up through and it'll actually run along this wall and it can kind of wall or some of that out and cause some damage in there and it'll make it a lot harder to get the pin out and get that shaft out in the future if you ever have to take it apart again so yeah just go ahead take your pin punch run it through there make sure that you're not leaving any metal shavings in there and then you're also going to want to do the same thing here on this planetary shaft here and you will actually get a quite a bit more metal shavings out of this one um, so definitely something just to watch out for it'll be a nice way to keep your machine from you know possibly facing some issues down the road so go ahead yeah make sure you get all these metal shavings picked up and in the trash and then we'll go ahead and install again I do recommend doing a re-grease at this point like I said you have the hardest part getting that pin out it's already out so uh, this would be a you know opportune time to take care of it, but if not, uh, let's just go ahead and put the planetary back into place. So this will actually just slide back up onto this shaft. Now one thing to look out for, you want to make sure that you have a washer here still. Sometimes it'll actually get stuck on the base of this, but uh, just be mindful that you still have a washer there. And then we'll go ahead and just slide this back up into place. Okay, so sometimes when you put this planetary back into place, you can line it up. You want to line up. You want to find your pinhole. Come over here and take a look. Sometimes you can only see a little bit of the pinhole in there. Let's see if we can get a better angle on that. You see some? It's not exactly lined up. It's just off-center just a little bit. So what we'll do is we'll take a handy-dandy little tiny screwdriver, or you can also take a really strong magnet and hook onto this and kind of pull from the bottom. But all we want to do is get that pinhole lined up. So we'll just go like that, kind of weasel in. A, you can use a, a nail. You can use anything that's kind of sharp and pointy to get in there uh, to line this up properly. As you can see, we are lined up. So now we are ready to go ahead and reinstall our pin here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just sit it into that hole. Now put some pressure on it with your thumb. Move it just a little bit, maybe wiggle it a little bit. You'll actually feel it kind of press into place. Sometimes you won't, but uh, you know, we are lined up in fact. So let's go ahead and we'll just give this a tap. Now don't bang on this too hard just in case you aren't lined up, but you'll see, you see it's starting to move nice and easy. We are lined up. And once you get it in there, you'll start to meet resistance. That's when you're going to have to really kind of give it a, a pretty good whack to get it back into place. Just like that. Now we are in place. This pin doesn't have to be all the way through. You can see, you know, we might punch it in a little bit more, but uh, it doesn't always go all the way through. Sometimes there will be, you know, a little be a little recess there. And honestly, if you leave it recessed a little bit, on the other side if you ever have to pull it out again yeah if you if you leave a little bit of recess in it jake is correct if you leave just a little bit of recess in it it'll allow you to get your pin on or your punch on there a little easier uh you're not sticking out quite as far it allows you to line up just in case down the road in the future you want to do a re-grease or you know you have a gear that goes out or something like that it'll just make your job a little bit easier next time good call good call jake good call Okay, and that pretty much concludes the fix. Just like that, we now have a spring and washer on our machine. Now, these are definitely going to help to keep your machine a little bit safer. Um, I'm really glad that we were able to manufacture these. I'm so excited that you guys are excited about installing these on your machine and kind of helping extend the longevity of them. So, kudos to you. We will see you next time. As always, thanks so much for watching. If you'd like one of these springs, there will be a link in the description to our website where you can pick one up. Again, like I said, I do recommend the regrease. That'll also be on the website. We'll go ahead and link the regrease video to this as well as the install for the Professional 600. I know some of you have both models and you'd like to add it to both machines. And maybe someone's just watching this and they have a Pro 600 and they want to see that video. We'll go ahead and link it for you. Make sure to like and subscribe as it helps us reach more people and help more people. We would surely appreciate it. Make sure to check out our subscription. We offer a 3 and $5 a month subscription, and we give away a machine that we refurbish every single month. And let me tell you, these, these, 
they, they may not be perfect aesthetically, but they purr like kittens and they are ready to do some work. We also have a Discord channel and other socials, so make sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Catch you next time. Toodles.